I was trying to do all of the things. I was trying to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, get to the gym every day. If you want to take the obsession out of health and basically come back to a place of pursuing health and wellness with ease and flow and grace instead of stress, overwhelm, then this video is for you. I'm going to be giving you practical tips and suggestions on how you can simplify your self-care routine to make it more achievable, realistic, given the life and circumstances that you currently have. So if you are familiar with my channel and you are somebody who's basically in this um, you know, health and wellness space, you might be familiar with the term of diet culture. But wellness culture might be a bit of a new one for you. Until a few months ago, I didn't even know of it. Similarly to diet culture, wellness culture talks about all of the rules and regulations, all of the do's and don'ts that we are supposed to do in order to live a healthy life. The issue with wellness culture is that it is prescriptive it doesn't take into account people's different circumstances financially, time and otherwise in order to basically meet all of these requirements that are supposed to be met to live a healthy life. And for some people, they can get so caught up in ticking all of the boxes that it becomes more of like an obsession. It becomes more of a thing of, if I don't do all of these things and I feel bad about myself, I feel like I'm not a good healthy person. For example, um, I basically was knee deep in all of this wellness culture um, because I'm a very health conscious person, obviously I'm a health coach and I got really sucked in. I was trying to do all of the things. I was trying to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning, get to the gym every day. You know, I was trying to eat my home cooked meals that are fully balanced and perfect, get all of my sleep, do all of the things and it was becoming it was basically taking over my life and it was making me more stressed, which is not the point of health. Health and self-care is actually supposed to make your life better, less stressful, not more stressful. So if you're finding that doing, trying to do all of these things is adding to your levels of stress, then you need to take a step back and just reflect on what you need to basically simplify, right? Simplify to amplify, basically. Another thing that I want to address is basically this black and white um, dichotomy between the, the two camps of I'm either, you know, working out and taking care of myself because I am conscious of how my body looks or I don't care so much about my body. I'm not trying to lose weight. So I'm not going to do all of these self-care things. I'm not going to go to the gym. I'm not going to eat healthy. It doesn't matter because I'm not interested in changing how my body looks. The truth is that our bodies have requirements. They have things that they expect from us that we need to do to take care of our bodies so that our body can function optimally and so that we have the capacity to show up and live a good life. Movement, gentle nutrition, getting enough sleep, drinking water, these basic things are important to making sure that we give our body the best chance at being able to live a good life. So it's not about looking at things from the perspective of I take care of myself because I'm trying to lose weight or I don't take care of myself because I'm not trying to lose weight. And that's something that uh, that's a mindset that people can get into because of diet culture, right? So this is kind of like the combination of diet culture and wellness culture manifesting into that black and white way of looking at self care. Let's now talk about how we can basically make living a healthy life less of an obsession, less of a time consuming thing and something that's more accessible for you no matter where you are at in your life. So like I mentioned, there are those basics that we need to do in order to give our bodies the best chance at functioning optimally, giving us energy, etc, etc. And really just starting with those basics is the thing that's going to have the most the biggest impact. If you're not managing to get enough sleep every night, then trying to get a little bit extra sleep is going to make a big impact instead of like doing things that you might see on the internet, on social media, like adding spirulina to your smoothie, which, you know, of course is a good thing. Spirulina is healthy, but it's not going to have such a big impact if those foundations are not set in stone yet. So a principle that I learned 
from my health coach training program with the Institute for Integrative Nutrition is called Crowding Out. And basically, as a coach, if I am coaching somebody on how to make their life you know, healthier, I will not tell them that you need to cut out these foods and you need to stop X, Y, and Z, but I will coach them from a perspective of giving them suggestions for things that they can add to their life, foods that they can add to their plates to boost and up-level their health and well-being. So I'm gonna give you a couple of suggestions just to give you a sense of what you can think of for yourself and just to demonstrate for you the fact that boosting your health doesn't mean that you have to do super complicated, time-consuming or expensive things. So here are a couple of suggestions for you starting with nutrition. If, for example, you don't eat any greens, you can start by adding greens to one meal a day. You can add, for example, spinach or kale or broccoli, whatever it is that you like. And greens are really important because they help our liver detox and get rid of environmental toxins and basically toxins that we ingest from food, water, all of that stuff that comes into our body. So that's one suggestion. You could also maybe, when you next go grocery shopping, add one new vegetable or one new fruit into your basket and you can do that each week so that you basically diversify the nutritional foods that you eat every week. Another suggestion in terms of now we're talking about movement, you can try to diversify your movement routine in the same way that we are working on diversifying the foods that you're eating. So if you are, let's say you're a diehard runner, um, you might try to maybe add strength training to your routine or you can try a dance workout on YouTube or whatever it is that piques your interest. You might find that you try something different and you like it and it just spices up your workout routine and makes it more fun because working out doesn't have to be super serious. It can also be fun. Another thing that you can do is let's say you're pressed for time. You only have like 30 or 10 minutes a day. You only have 10 minutes a day to work out. Use those 10 minutes to do something to move your body. Working out does not have to be 30 minutes or 45 minutes or even an hour a day. Just moving your body, even if it's just for five minutes, is gonna have a really big impact on your mental health. It's gonna impact your energy. It's just gonna help you function more optimally, circulate more oxygen through your body, boost your brain health, boost your concentration and presence of mind just by adding a few minutes of movement a day. Even if you can do something like, you know, two minutes throughout the day, maybe you do two, five two minute sessions of moving your body which adds up to 10 minutes however it works for you these are just suggestions additionally for your emotional well-being you could try journaling you could try just opening up to the people around you who you can trust or if you've got the money you can go and see a therapist so i'm just throwing these things out there so that you can see how simple it is to basically level up your self-care. How it doesn't have to be something that takes a lot of time. It doesn't have to be something that, you know, becomes a overwhelming job on top of the job that you already have. And it doesn't have to come with a rigid and inflexible mindset. You can fit it into your schedule. You can fit it into the life that you currently have. So that is, you know, what I wanted to share with you today. And just to recap, it's about crowding out, adding things instead of thinking about things to subtract. Keep it simple. The simpler, the better. When things are simple, we're able to do them and we're able to be consistent. And then we can add on from there instead of overwhelming ourselves with just too much at once. So thank you so much for tuning into today's video and sending you all my love. Bye.